Hey what's up gamers, even though it might look that I completely given up on my NES survival game, I'm still working on it. So what changes have I made since the last devlog video? I decided to finally make a decent sleep animation. If you remember previously if you would pick a sleep option from the menu, visually nothing much would change and it would look weird. So now I created a fade out effect. The screen fades to black and when it fades back in you will see your character lying in the bed. Another new change was so to say a completely new location which can be accessed if you go to the far right end of the initial map. There you will find an entrance. The reasoning behind this feature was to add a bit more items to collect Plus, entering and leaving this new location would trigger animal regeneration and also item respawns. After adding this, I've noticed that the map system that I've built so far is not suited to load and display maps with different scrolling progressions. So that's why the entrances are at the, for the initial map at the end and for the new one at the very beginning. Because at first I made the uh, exit point of the new location somewhere in the, in the middle. But while moving from one location to another I've noticed a lot of strange collision and uh, scrolling bugs that I could not fix at that moment. So I thought messing around with it is not worth my time. That's why I just created this basic hack and moved on to the next feature. So the next thing was to limit the collectible item respawns. For instance, after adding the new location, it was very easy to stack up on Rowan Berries by just going back and forth through locations. But this was totally not what I wanted. So I started tracking when the certain item was picked and respawn that item only after certain amount of hours or after beginning of the new day. This change created an additional challenge. Compared to how it was before, it's no longer possible to amass a huge amount of items. So you have to use them sparingly or you will have to wait until they reappear again. After that, I added hit points to the inventory items. It was mainly for the weapons. So now they lose 10 hit points every time you make a successful hit. After the HP runs out, your weapon will disappear. So you will need to craft it again. I think it made the crafting more meaningful. The food items such as meat also loses HP. The raw meat loses half of its HP with the beginning of a new day and the cooked meat loses a quarter. When all the HPs are gone, the meat won't disappear, but it will turn into poop. It might look silly, but I thought that's the best image representation of a completely useless and disgusting item. I'm not sure if I could have done a better job by trying to draw a 16 by 8 sprite of rotten meat with only three colors. Although the poop can be still used as a fuel for the fireplace, so it's not that completely useless. Previously the spear looked and worked just like another knife. It even used the same sprite when equipped. Not anymore. I've changed the spear's behavior and now it's a projectile that you can throw across the screen and hurt multiple NPCs. There is one disadvantage though. After the spear flies away, it will be gone forever and you will need to craft another one. So if you want to battle werewolves at night, you will need to craft a bunch of spears. But for that, you will need to gather quite a lot of sticks. But those sticks could be used to heat up your house. So you will need to come up with some strategy here. I'm also thinking about adding a reward for hitting multiple entities, but I haven't figured out what it could be. I don't want something that's unrealistic or completely 
useless. What do you think? Maybe it could be some special item that could be dropped in this situation. Hmm. While working, I've noticed that I have only one kilobyte left in my main bank. So I've decided to finally move the Thames Studio and all the sound and music tracks to a separate bank. Well, at that moment I had two completely empty ones. So the move was successful, the sound is still working. Even though in order to play something I need to switch banks. But this way I managed to free up 4 kilobytes, so that's a size of a medium Atari 2600 game. So yeah, I can still keep adding new stuff. Talking about the sound effects, I've added a new sound effect and a palette animation when you hit an NPC. I haven't expected that it would make such a significant difference. But dang, now it's very satisfying to just unequip your weapon and punch those bunnies. Since the werewolves don't leave any items after being killed, I thought it was very weird how they just disappear into thin air. So I added a red splatter frame to be displayed after every NPC is killed. Nothing really fancy, but it's still something. I've also increased the damage rate that the werewolves inflict to the player. So they won't let you punch them that easily. The thing that bothers me right now about the werewolves is that sometimes it looks that they punch thin air, but you still get the damage. I haven't tried to fix that yet, but I think probably I will need to check the collision with the player one more time after a werewolf raises its paw. Or maybe it's just me and everything is fine. What do you think? So after being killed by werewolves, I've noticed that the game over screen is, well, it's kind of boring. So I drew this picture of a main character lying on its face. I used the CHR section that's meant for the sprites, since I don't have any sprites in the title screen or in the game over screen. So now I just flip uh, which side of the CHR to use for the background graphics. So this way I have two large images in the CHR. The last new thing was my attempt to cram something similar to the villages from Animal Crossing. At least I wanted to add one and see how it feels. So far I added this hut in the second location. The first problem with it was that it was basically in the middle of two screens. So before you enter it you need to scroll the screen a little bit. And of course when you leave the hut all kinds of scrolling and collision issues would follow. I almost given up at this point. But luckily I come up with this ugly temporary solution. So I guess later I need to invest some time and write a proper routine that loads and adapts the collision detection data depending on where the player's character appears. After the new HUD was in place and I could properly enter it and leave it, I needed somebody as the inhabitant. Since I had the bear sprites that I drew way back, I thought they were perfect for this task. I reused a part of Werewolf's AI so the bear would always face the player, but it would stay in place. I added several collision cells using my editor where the bear stands so the player could not go through it. Also I made the bear immortal so you can hit it as many times you want, you won't be able to kill it. Although when you attack it with a knife, the knife wears out almost immediately, I, I haven't figured out why it's happening. Then I added some new tiles. I drew a hobo stove, added a bed, so it would look cozy. And the house was almost ready. Then I needed to somehow show what the bear wants. So every time this indoor screen is loaded, a text is printed below. At this point I wanted to use this as a tutorial how to craft items. So far I hardcoded this thing, 
uh, where the bear expects for you to craft a jar of jam for him. I added a different menu for food items, which is active only when you are at this house. So there's an option give, and when you give the jam to the bear, it will give you an reward. I'm not gonna show what the reward is, you will have to find out yourselves. But yeah, for now it's just this one thing. If you leave the bear's house and return back, it will demand for some more jam. Maybe in future I will uh, teach him to ask for different items. So yeah, I guess that's about all the changes for now. As usual, you can find the latest games ROM and the source code of it on my GitHub page. I will put the links in the description. If you're interested in the further uh, development of this game, then don't be shy and please subscribe the channel. It helps me a lot. So, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.